Assalamu alaikum and hi everyone. Now let's take a look on lecture 1 introduction to database and database environment part 3. So this is the objective of this lesson. We will take a look on three level as this part architecture. We describe the database language, data model and conceptual modeling and also the functions of DBMS. A major aim of a database system is to provide users with an abstract view of data, hiding certain details of how data is stored and manipulated. Design of a database must be an abstract and general description of the information requirements of the organization that is to be represented in the database. Each user in the database wants a different view of data stored. How to make sure it can be done? ANSYS Park Architecture has the answer. ANSYS Park Architecture has three levels. The first one is external level. So this is a user view. It describes that part of database that is relevant to a particular user. Different user got different views. Second one, conceptual level. It is a community view of the database. It describes what data is stored in the database and the relationships among the data. The third one is internal level. It is the way the DBMS and operating system perceive the data. It describes how the data is stored in the database. Let's take a look now on the objective of ANSYS Park Architecture. The first one is all users should be able to access the same data. The second one, a user's view is immune to changes made in other view. Next, users should not need to know physical database storage details. Then, DBA should be able to change database storage structures without affecting the user's view. Internal structure of database should be unaffected by changes to physical aspects of storage. The last one, DBA should be able to change conceptual structure of database without affecting all users. Let's take a look on the example on ANSYS Park implementation. In conceptual level, we know all the data in our database. For example, we have six different columns in our table. However, in user view number one, the user can only see four columns out of six with one DRF attribute of H from DOB. In user view two, the user can only see three columns out of six in total. In the internal view, how the data is stored in the database is known by the DBA only. Let's take a look on data independence in ANSYS Park Architecture. The first one is logical data independence. It refers to immunity of external schema to changes in conceptual schema. When the conceptual schema change, it will not affect the external schema. The second one is physical data independence. It refers to immunity of conceptual schema to changes in the internal schema. If the internal schema change, it will not affect the conceptual schema. Now, let's take a look on database language. It is divided into few parts. The first one is Data Definition Language, DDL. DDL is used to specify the database schema. The normal command that we use is create, author, and so forth. The second one is DML, Data Manipulation Language. It is used to read and update the database. DML are divided into two parts. The first one is Procedural DML. These procedural languages specify how the output of a DML statement is to be obtained, while the non-procedural DMLs describe only what output is to be obtained. Then we have four generation languages. These are the language that consists of statements similar to statements in human language, such as Python and PHP. Data models and conceptual modeling. Data model is an integrated collection of concepts for describing data, relationships between data and constraints on the data in an organization. The purpose of this data model is to represent data in an understandable way. Data model comprises of structural part, manipulative part and possibility set of integrity rules.
there are few categories of data models which include object based such as entity relationship diagram record based such as relational data model and network data model and physical data models conceptual schema is the core of a system supporting all users views and it should be completed and accurate representation of an organization's data requirements now let's take a look at functions of dbms functions of dbms means what your dbms can do the first one is dbms can be used for data storage retrieval and update second one each dbms must have an accessible catalog or what we call as data dictionary the third one your dbms can support the transaction every time you access the database that's what we call as transaction concurrency control services we know that in our database we want to support multiple users at the same time however they must be controlled towards these concurrent users next is recovery services your database might corrupt one day so we need some mechanism to reconstruct back the data lost then authorization services not all users can access all the data inside the database only certain users can see the data inside the database the support for data communication dbms must be capable of integrating with communication software next integrity services BMS must ensure that both the data in the database and changes to the data follow certain rules Next is about services to promote data independence. DBMS must include facilities to support the independence of programs from the actual structure of the database. Utility services mean DBMS should provide a set of utility services such as import facilities, multi facilities and so forth. That's all for now. See you again in the next chapter.